This video is part of a series of SSIS tutorial videos created by CozyRock. In this video, I will show you how to configure an execute SQL task to execute a select statement that returns parameters in variables within an SSIS package. I'm going to start out by executing this one select statement that will select the sale ID and the owner from the top row of the Vigo table. So I select it and execute it, and there's the results. Now we'll go over to Visual Studio, and I've already configured the variables to um, receive the information from the SQL select statement. So there you can see we have owner and sale ID. And now I'll just drag the execute SQL task onto the canvas. I'll double click to open the editor. And our result set will be none. Our connection type will be OLEDB. The connection, I've already set up the connection manager. And the SQL source type is direct input and the SQL statement, I think I have it in the clip bin. Yeah, there it is from what I just executed in Management Studio. So now I'll show you how to modify it to add the parameters. I put in question mark equals and then sale ID and then question mark equals owner. And now I need to set up the parameter mapping I'm going to make a couple of these columns a little bigger so I can see what I'm doing here. So um, we'll add a row. And so the first question mark in the statement was for the sale ID. So I select that. And then for direction, I choose output because we're receiving output from the select statement. So the input output direction is from the perspective of SQL Server not from the perspective of the SSIS package. And then it's care is the data type. And then the parameter name, now this is only true if you're using OLEDB, um, we'll start with zero. And then we add another row for the owner. And again, the direction will be output and another nvar care and this will be the parameter name we use one all right now we're done configuring it and i want to set some breakpoints so we can see when the variables change so i'll go down to edit breakpoints and i'll select the one break when the container receives the on post execute event click ok and now I'll save the package and I want to make sure it runs this package. So there it's uh, hit a breakpoint and I don't have the variables I'm using for this package in the watch window so I'll drag those up there. So that's owner and sale ID and there you can see they've changed from the initial values that I set them to. Stay tuned for another example. I'll show you another example where I'm going to actually put in two select statements in the execute SQL task and you can see um, that they're successful when I execute them here in Management Studio. So now I'm going to copy those and I'll just go in and modify my SQL statement in the execute SQL task. So I'll paste in those two statements and then I'll put in question mark equals max of the min bid column from Vigo and put in the question mark equals 
for the same from the Laporte table. Now I need to um, fix my variable or parameter mappings, so I'll remove these two and add two new ones. So the first one was Vigo. All right, so I'll find the Vigo max variable. And again, the direction is output. And I choose end fair care. And then this will be zero. And then I'll add another row. And this will be the Laporte max variable. Again, it needs to be output and Enver care. And this will be parameter one. Okay, and we already have breakpoints set. I'll just save the package and now I'll execute it. All right, so now we're looking at the Laporte max and the Vigo max, and there you can see they changed from their initial values. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.